Hello and welcome back to Eagle Rising and we're going to be taking a look at the various policies that the Southern Imperium currently has instituted because, well, let's face it, it's probably going to be a good idea for us to make sure that we have the largest possible army, the strongest possible influence gains, among other things, and obviously attempting to make it so that our faction actually knows what it's doing. Because some of these I think are okay, but they are certainly not amazing. You know, these are the ones that you think to yourself, well, well, you know, they're... Yeah, well, neither here nor there, really. As you can see, I mean, gaining influence per day, yeah, I think that's pretty good. That's, that seems pretty nice. Uh, royal privilege, I don't really care about that too much. Um, I mean, obviously, that only affects the ruler mostly. And then we obviously have marshals. But what I would very much like to get is I would like to get something that provides us with a little bit of extra something or other. So, for example, serfdom is pretty good because towns gain security. Uh, I think that's pretty important. So we're actually going to be doing that. And I'm going to spend... Actually, I'm just going to spend 20 because I don't see a I don't see a point in attempting to well do anything really there because we have all the support in the world already so that's perfectly fine. We also have castle upgrade costs being reduced by 20%. I mean generally I would do all of this if I could, but unfortunately at the moment because I don't have a an unlimited supply of influence, I'm just going to kind of click through here, see which ones are the best and then you know, have a grand old time. For example, noble retinues. This is, in my opinion, one of the most powerful policies that you can take, but it does only affect tier five clans and above, and that's obviously going to make a bit of a, a bit of a significant difference. So we're just going to be once again limping along, spending twenty influence, and we're just going to be attempting to do that every single time. Road tolls could be really good too. Because trade tax paid to the town owner is increased by 3%. I do own a town now. So me owning a town obviously does impact what kind of decisions I'm going to attempt to make at least. Settlement loyalty is increased by 0.5 per day. Unfortunately, I will never be able to get this passed. Because I have 0% support among the other um, among the other vassals. Which is really kind of sad to be honest. Because getting that increased loyalty. Could be really really useful to us. But anyway never mind. Mm, this is 100% support. 5% of the village income is paid to the ruler clan. As tax. And 5% less village income. For clans. Well I don't know whether I really care about that. Because you can see a breakdown of what I currently have here. I do have a couple of villages. Um, but 5% less from these, does it really make that much difference? No, not really. So, yeah, let's actually go ahead and do that. That is going to, um, reduce our influence down below 100. So maybe if there's something that we won't really want to go for, then we won't be able to. And then we're just going to be very sad. Uh, what about this? Towns held by the ruler clan. No, we don't want to lose loyalty. Thank you very much. Royal guard. Yeah, mm. That's usually very good if you are the leader of the faction, of course. Uh, losing prosperity, not particularly good. Ruler gains double influence. No, that doesn't really matter. Mm, food production. Yeah, now this is really, really good if you have one of the other policies instituted. And obviously I'm not going to be able to do that because it is not me that is the leader of the faction. And I can't just push them through. Uh, we could go for bailiffs. Town security increased by one. That's pretty nice, in my opinion. Tax from towns being reduced. I personally don't care about that too much. Because the tax from the town is relatively negligible as it is. So even if I were to, you know, just go ahead and reduce that, it really doesn't make that much difference. All of these that increase your loyalty with the town, they have 0% support. It's so sad. It is really, really sad indeed. Anyway, there we go. We have uh, indeed done all of the policies that we wanted to. And we are now going to just head into here. I literally did one battle so far. 
and that is for me just fighting some mountain bandits. So I'm just going to sell the loot there just to make sure that I have, uh, well, I was going to say a sizable amount of money when we make our way into Azurai territory because we only have a very short time before the war exhaustion starts to kick in and we might even decide to make peace before that. So I would very much appreciate attempting to do something here and uh, maybe eliminating a couple of vassals along the way. Of course, that's not going to happen because they're going to be really, really sneaky. And they're going to leave the town. Oh, look at this. I'm going to sneak in behind. Oh, this is perfect. Oh, you have nowhere to go now, sir. Oh, yes. You have nowhere to go now. Or oh, ma'am. Yes, indeed. Okay, so wait a minute, wait a minute. I just need to actually wait a second. There we are. Now we can go in. Let's do this. All right. So yeah, obviously I am going to need, um, I am going to need a crossbow. But unfortunately, at the moment, because it is wartime, I'm feeling that maybe it would be a better idea for me to go and get that when the Azari have declared peace with us. Because what I'm going to need to do, obviously, is I'm going to need to go into Vlandian territory to get that crossbow. Because it seems to me you uh, you are also in, you know in agreement with me when it, when when I was mentioning that and basically saying yep Vlandia is probably the place to go for that so that's exactly what we're gonna do when peacetime occurs and um, we're no doubt gonna be in a uh, in a <laughs> in a situation where we're probably gonna get attacked relatively soon after this as well although the, I, I feel like the Southern Imperium is actually doing a pretty good job considering I'm not the leader you know I'm not the leader and I, obviously I'm not saying that I am amazing at leading a faction or anything like that I'm just saying that generally the AI can make some rather questionable decisions sometimes but this time around it feels like Regea is actually doing a really nice job and it seems like the vassals are also playing very handily they're being cautious they're not overextending too much, at least from what I can tell. And they are taking on battles that they know they can win in comparison to getting caught out and being defeated, getting taken prisoner, <clears throat> Regea, because obviously she did get taken prisoner in a previous episode. And obviously we had to break her out of prison. And that, um, yeah, that was actually pretty good, uh, you know, to be honest, because that, that did increase our relation with her. And that made it a lot easier for us to be able to marry her daughter, which obviously is pretty good. And I don't know whether you um, whether you missed that in the previous episode, but uh, Ira is actually um, she's actually pregnant now, so we have a uh, possible heir, which is quite good because if you you know saw the beginning of the series, then you know exactly why that's a good thing. Um, but to cut a long story short, um, yes, Borgar could potentially die very, very soon. We don't know. Um, because I think uh, old age comes in at around age 60-something. Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure. I think it's 67. So it might be quite some time before that happens. But let's just take a quick look. Yeah, he's 52 at the moment. So it's been two years since we began this um, since we began this playthrough. And uh, you can see a, a wide variety of our friends here. I really need to make more friends, to be honest, don't you think? I feel like I don't have many friends. Oh, that's that's terrible. Okay, well, um, yeah, we're, we're probably going to have to do something about that. But I'm thinking we might actually try, and I'm not entirely sure if this is going to work, but I would like to be able to take this town that I've just stopped by just now. I feel like that would be really nice. Every profitable caravan you own gives you one renown per day. I will be taking that perk. Thank you very much. Unfortunately, my caravans are having a really rough time of things. And they continue to get themselves eliminated in almost every single way. And I really have no idea why, to be honest. I, I, I'm, I'm very surprised, to be fair, because I'm thinking to myself, well, they have the ability to run away, but maybe they're just getting caught out. And um, yeah, that's making things very, very difficult for me. Anyway, uh, ooh, yeah, this is, this is going to be kind of harsh. Okay, this is going to be kind of harsh. They have 406 in the garrison here. Is there a vassal in here, actually? No, there isn't. It doesn't seem like that, at least. No, it doesn't seem like that. That's very surprising. Okay, yeah, we we. Mm, I'm um, 
You know, I'm a little bit worried about this, to be honest. Uh, maybe I should have gone back to friendly territory first. Mm, let me just take a quick look at the composition that they have. They have 25 master archers. Yeah, that might be a little bit problematic. Okay, well, bear with me here. If I do end up taking a number of casualties, then that's just how it's going to have to be. I, I can't really afford to wait because we have the war exhaustion counting down. We don't know whether there's an enemy army nearby, and I don't know why I need to explain this, but some people don't seem to understand that generally the AI is going to react to your attack. Yeah, I know. It, it's very surprising, isn't it? In a game of warfare, the enemy is going to attempt to defend their lands, unless they are having a feast, for example. Oh, no, wait, that's Warband. Okay, never mind. Anyway, so yeah, let's see what we can do here. Obviously, they do have ballistas, okay? They have ballistas, but thankfully they don't have catapults. And yes, I could have definitely built some trebuchets, and I could have then, you know, done some damage to the ballistas on the walls and things like that. But generally, why would I spend the time? You know, why would I spend the time? There, there is really no point in spending the time when we have, well not much of it <laughs> that's the point we don't we don't time is not a luxury for us we really do need to make the most of our opportunities and i am gonna i am gonna i'm gonna die i'm gonna die here wait a minute let me oh, oh, oh yeah let me get up the stairs get up the stairs get up the stairs it, it, it literally looked like he was dancing up the stairs there for a real quick second okay i've got to be I've got to be kind of careful here Okay, I'm going to try and stab him. There we go. Nice stab. Okay, let's block that. Thank you very much. Nice nice head attack. Very good. Yep. Head attack is the technical term. I wonder whether a horsey fellow is going to come up here. And then I will be able to head attack him as well. Yes. Me smash. Very good. <laughs> anyway, let's see. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm basically just trying to keep them off the ballista. That's basically all I really want them to do. Okay, this might be a, a little, uh, little worrying. Oh, no, no, maybe not, maybe not. I really shouldn't go for so many overheads. That's also a bit of a problem that I, I'm getting a, kind of addicted to the, uh, to the overhead of the Gladius. Because the overhead of this Gladius is so incredibly powerful. And someone actually said, um, I should upgrade my weapon. So I should go into the Smithing Guild and take a look and see if there's a new Gladius for me there. And yeah, yeah, I'm definitely going to do that, but the, what I've actually seen so far is that the various Gladius that I've had access to, and there hasn't been that many of them, obviously, but let's just say that whenever I've seen one, it hasn't been that good in terms of stats, and it hasn't really been able to replace the one I currently have, which is really weird in my opinion, so not entirely sure what's going on with that, but hopefully we'll be able to find something nice at the Smithing Guild. I'm sure... We will be able to. Stab him. Oh, nice stab, sir. Nice stab. Very good. Okay, come on. Let's eliminate these guys. I'm actually not entirely sure how we're doing, to be honest. I feel like we're doing quite well. But then I'm also thinking to myself, well, um, the, the bars at the top are not looking particularly good for us. And I'm not entirely sure where all of my units are either. It feels to me like we don't have too many units. Ah, no, there we go. There we go. There's a couple of them down here. Embroiled in the fighting. Oh yes. They are prepared to do what is necessary to achieve victory. Ah, oh, hello there. There seems to be a lot of people over there. Let me see if I can get a couple of shots with my crossbow. Maybe I can actually get 275. That would be real nice. If I can get 275, my damage is going to absolutely skyrocket. And I'm going to be very pleased. It seems like this is indeed a victory for us. We are going to take a lot of casualties in the process, though. And look at this. Apparently, the uh, front door was open somehow. Not entirely sure how that happened. Hello, archers. Oh, dear. I can't believe I missed. Oh, hello. Oh, there's a, there's a lot of my forces coming in. Very nice. Did I get to 275, by the way? I didn't see. Oh, no. Now I'm in a, a bit of a quandary. Oh, no. There we go. There we go. Ooh, nice. We literally just made it just before the victory.
can I maybe get a little bit more damage? I, I wouldn't mind leveling up my athletics at a, a slight amount. I mean, getting to 250 might be cool. Getting to 275 would be even better. But it feels to me like uh, eh, athletics is going to be much more difficult than anticipated. Generally, I, I'm, it's kind of weird because in previous series, I've been able to level up athletics really, really soon. But I suppose I've just been using my horse too much in field battles and stuff like that. That's probably the reason. And also because I am using a Gladius, which indeed is... Well, I mean, you can use it as a slashing weapon, but it's uh, quite a, uh, you know, sort of a short reach to it. And as a result, it is a little bit more difficult to use in open combat. But there you go! We actually achieved victory, amazingly enough. How many... Uh, whoa -ho, ho ho Those guys. They got 158 kills. They were the most... Um, most most of my units that were eliminated as, as well. So seems like I have uh, quite a significant number of them. And... Uh, oh! Oh! It seems like... Look at that! We actually had some prisoners here. We actually had Southern Imperium prisoners in the prisoner's hold of Razik. And I am actually really surprised about that. Okay, I will be capturing this as well. I will be claiming it because it is very close by to my other um, to my other town. So it kind of makes sense, right? And I'm going to be putting... Should I even bother putting 10,000 in here? I'm going to put 5,000 in here just to increase its construction speed a little bit. And I'm going to have to find a governor, which is going to be very, very difficult. Uh, actually, maybe not that difficult. Maybe not that difficult. Yes, yeah, she seems good. She seems good. Hello there. Very nice. Uh, I'm going to ransom all the prisoners because we're going to make peace anyway. And even if I did have some, uh, I don't know, uh, some vassals or whatever, it doesn't really make any difference then. Uh, I'm going to make... Uh, manage the town and make a governor. She is going to be the governor here. Yes, there we go. And then we're going to hopefully get some additional food production as well. We really don't want workshops in my opinion and militia grounds not really necessary right now. I feel like the additional food is going to be very, very useful for us. And we're also going to go for festivals and games because our current loyalty drift is way too high, at least in my opinion. And we're going to go over here. Let me see. Is there anything here that I can actually equip for either of us? No, it doesn't seem like it. Hilariously enough, Borgar is still really short. Have you noticed how he's really short? I might have to do something about that. 25,000 for selling that stuff. Wow. Okay, that's actually kind of amazing. All right, and what else do we have here? Okay, so there we go. 37,000 total for selling all of that stuff. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the Smithing Guild and take a look. Do they literally only have this? Yes, they literally only have that. Okay, yeah, that is, uh, well, somewhat lackluster, isn't it? Yes, somewhat lackluster indeed. Okay, so I am probably just going to level up my forces right now. So level up these guys. I also leveled up, of course. And we're going to get the last perk in crossbows, which is going to make us do massive damage with it. And I'm also going to be putting the last point in athletics. I was wondering why it wasn't leveling up that fast. And now, well, there's the, there's the reason, I suppose. Strong legs is absolutely amazing. And I will indeed be taking that every single time because it just, well, gives me so much room for error. So if I do end up falling off somewhere very, very high up, then I might actually survive. Yeah, pretty good. All right, so apart from that, what else do we want to level up? Well, it's probably social or intelligence. I'm probably going to go for social because eventually I would like to try and get some additional trade skill. And do we have another companion that we can potentially get here that is a decent caravan person? I mean, generally, I don't know whether it really matters because right here is not particularly a good place to uh, <laughs> to start one. Let's just say that, you know, they're just going to get eliminated by the Azurai really fast and then it's just going to be all for nothing, which is probably not the best idea. All right, so let's go over to Mr. Borgar. And we're going to change his height a little bit because he just seems way, way too, uh, way too short in my opinion. So let's just make him not that, not that tall, but just a little bit taller. There we go. 
Hopefully that's going to work out. And, oh, look at that. Kuth. Kuth has gained 33 skill points in Steward. Good work, sir. Yes, good work, because he's the governor in Husenfolk. And, uh, yeah, that's actually going uh, pretty nicely for us. Okay, so there's Turiodos. He's actually called for an army. And there's Talas. Talas is obviously going to be heading into Razi in just a second. So we are going to need to defend it, I assume. That might be a little bit problematic. I don't know how that's going to go because my forces really do need to restore themselves. So I'm just going to wait here for a little bit of time. Maybe I will be able to restore myself before the army gets here. If they are actually going to besiege. Because Turiodos is obviously really close by. Oh, oh. That was really bad. I don't know why Obron just ran in there randomly. That was a really, really bad decision. Oh, but thankfully Regea is now turning up. Oh yes, fantastic. Okay, my army is back up on its feet as well. And Regea is running around showing her strength. And Turiodos is attempting to besiege this castle over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can maybe support him a little bit if he needs it. But the war exhaustion is going to kick in very, very soon. Oh, yeah. I also did not determine any improved garrison settings for Razi at the moment. So we're going to actually go over there real quick. And we're just going to do that. Improved garrison. There we go. And we're just going to do, once again, 250. Basically just do the exact same thing as we have in the other place. And there we have it. Okay, that seems pretty good to me. All right, so I assume Turiodos is going to get attacked. He is indeed getting attacked. Whoa. Well. I suppose have fun with that. But Regea is doing some work right now. Regea is attempting to take Habyar, which is actually amazing. Can we can we go in here? Yes, we can. Look at that. Okay. Wow, this is going to be some really really swift conquering of territory and I'm going to be very surprised if we can pull this off because this is going to require a lot of security in the area and I don't know whether we have the presence to be able to back it up to be honest it feels to me like we're not really going to be able to do too much uh did she build anything yeah she built a battering ram okay that's kind of that's kind of bad to be honest uh, who's who's shooting me? Oh, that guy. Oh, oh, ah, oh, so, oh, so lovely. Oh yeah. Hmm. Yes, yes. The AI is very good at at doing that really annoying stuff where they literally just shoot you in the face twice, and then they just hide. You know, they're really good at that. Okay, so anyway, let's just zoom, zoom. I don't have a shield at the moment. Should probably get one to be honest. Ow, 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 ow. No, 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 no. You can't shoot me. I'm moving. I'm moving. No. Okay, don't kill me. Don't kill me. I'm I'm hiding. I'm hiding in the best possible place. I can't believe the battering ram actually made it to the uh, to the gates. This is actually kind of weird. Hilariously enough, now everyone is attempting to stab the gate. I'm very surprised that that's actually doing anything, to be honest, because stabbing in this close quarters is going to do such a... Yeah. Uh, also, they're throwing rocks on us right now, so... <laughs> oh, that's never going to work. Okay, yeah. That's going to be somewhat problematic. Okay, some people are indeed using the ladders, which is obviously preferable in my opinion. Because those guys at the gate are going to take an age to get it down. So let's just go up here and see what we can do. Obviously, we outnumber the opponent so incredibly easily right now. So this should be a pretty easy siege for us. Oh, hello there. Oh, sneaky, sneaky. Boom. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, okay. Wait, no. I was actually thinking to myself, I'm going to be so sneaky right here. I actually thought, yes, I will be sneaky. But no. Apparently, they they completely... Um, <laughs> they, compl they were completely ready for me. They were completely ready. So that, that was not particularly good.
All right, it's now time to lay in a pursuit course. Oh, what did, did, did you see that? Go back 10 seconds. Oh, you can go back 10 seconds. Oh, go and see that. Oh, that was uh, that was actually really, really funny. Uh, it was on the left side of the screen. This guy literally just slid across the uh, across the ground. I know that kind of thing happens much more often than I actually notice, but when I notice it, I just absolutely love that because you know me, I really do appreciate those uh, those ragdoll effects. And what's actually going on here? Okay, that was weird. I literally had to use the super fast mode for some reason. I don't know what was going on there. Seems like everyone just stood still and uh, did nothing. Yeah, that's great. Anyway, there we go. Let's take some prisoners. And I don't think I'm going to get the opportunity to claim this for myself, right? No, no. As I thought. I mean, I wasn't actually planning on doing that because that would have been way too expensive for me to deal with, in my opinion. I don't think I would have been able to handle the wages. And once again, we are just going to sell every single thing that we can just to make sure that we have the wages required to be able to continue moving through enemy territory. Obviously, Azurai is about to make peace, so I don't think it really should um, last that much longer. Ah, yes. This is an absolutely perfect companion for what I had in mind. She is going to be a, a really, really amazing caravan master, so hopefully we'll be able to make one quite soon and the war exhaustion is about to kick in literally just about to kick in just the second and we have taken many many thieves from the azurai which is super nice and look at that look at this they are willing to pay us almost 4000 in tribute and i will definitely be saying yes to this i will spend 150 relation because I want as much relation with Faron as possible because he's a very special vassal. I don't know whether you know this, but I'm completely joking with you. I have no idea what he's all about. But anyway, we're going to give him as much support as possible and gain a decent 34 relation with him. There we go. And we also have the owner of this place, so I'm probably going to give this to, well, I mean, me not giving it to him, but I'm going to give this to Satros just because I would like additional charm skill, relation, etc. And we're just going to try and increase our relation with a number of people from, um, from the... Uh, from the Southern uh, Southern Imperium. I was going to say Southern Empire. No, no. Southern Imperium. And it seems like we are actually giving money to the Northern Imperium. I actually don't know how much we are giving to them. Um, I, I saw, you know, I saw somewhere that there was a way to see how much you're giving per day. But now I'm now I'm not entirely sure how to do that anymore. I know that there was some place that you could see it, but now I don't know what it is. So, yes, unfortunate, isn't it? Okay, well, whatever the case, peacetime has now been declared, which I am very pleased about. Oh yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to take Siege Medic because losses to Siege Bombardment have a 50% chance of being wounded instead of being killed. In my opinion, that's absolutely amazing because Siege Bombardment is one of the main reasons why I really do not like doing it. Because you generally end up losing more casualties, you know, and you just kind of lose people for not much gain, you know, and it just kind of makes more sense to do it a different way. But anyway, I am going to sell, actually, you know what, I'm not going to sell that much because I would like to give her a new horse and a new harness. And we are, of course, going to now make her into a caravan master. So I'm going to actually pay for a better caravan with better troops. And Zandina is hopefully going to do a really, really good job. As far as I'm aware, she is really good at it. And I have used her in the past as a caravan master. And she's always done a great job. So hopefully she'll do, do well here as well. But um, who knows? <laughs> uh, it might not happen. It might not happen. Anyway, debasement of the currency. What's this? Settlement loyalty decreased by one per day. Oh, I don't like this. Oh, no, no, I, I don't like this at all. I can't do anything about it, though, as you can quite clearly tell. I mean, if I had 150 influence, I might be able to influence it somewhat, but there's nothing I can do about this. I'm just going to abstain from the vote in general because there's a lot of support for that. 
I really don't know why. I mean, I, I guess I kind of do know why, because they don't have thieves that are a different culture to, to them. So their loyalty situations are all relatively secure and they don't really need to worry about it. But me, no, I do need to worry quite a bit about the loyalty levels. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so let's actually just take a quick look at the loyalty right now. Yeah, it's 37. We are losing 0.46 every single day. And what's currently affecting it the most? Well, security is not that good. I mean, it, it looks pretty good to me, to be honest. It looks pretty good. You know, 65, it's not that bad. But maybe we're going to have to do a little bit more than that. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to just head on over to Denustica because obviously what I would like to do is take a look at the Smithing Guild, see if we can potentially find a better Gladius for us. Here we go. All right. So let's have a look, see here. Okay, uh, this is a Thamaskine Steel Gladius. So you can see here, this is the difference. So it has a better length, it has more thrusting damage, uh, it has more swing damage, uh, it has slightly slower speed swings, but that's it. I think that seems pretty good. I mean, to me, that seems like that's pretty good. It seems like the damage that you gain is pretty much worth it for swapping the uh, the, the speed of the swing and, and things like that. So, yeah, why not? Okay, we'll go for that. There we have it, and there we are. Okay, so we have now equipped that, which is very nice. And uh, there we go. Okay, so yeah, we spent uh, 8,000. I, I now have 50,000, which is pretty good. And we also need to buy some food. So I will be buying a whole bunch of uh, different foods to hopefully increase my steward skill a little bit. I mean, it doesn't really matter to me that much because I don't have any focus points in it as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I have very little, but we can still level it up a little bit. Maybe get the next perk or something like that at 75. And then we'll see where that leads us. Anyway, seems like to me, we've done a really good job in uh, trying to take a couple of uh, a couple of thieves from the Azerai. And hopefully what we'll be able to do is wage war against the Northern Empire, Northern Imperium, mm -hmm. Northern Imperium again soon. And then we might be able to take things like Mysia and Prila and so on. And then we'll see what we can do. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.